The explorer adjusted their suit as the shuttle doors hissed open, stepping onto the rocky surface of the alien planet. The sky above was a dull orange, with a thick, dusty atmosphere that blurred the horizon. The air, though breathable with his suit, carried an oppressive weight, as though the planet itself resented his presence. His mission here was simple, survey, collect samples, and gather any data that could prove useful. Another routine exploration in a long string of isolated assignments, yet this world felt different. An uneasy tension clung to the air. As he ventured further from the shuttle, his helmet's visor reflected the barren landscape ahead. Jagged cliffs rose in the distance, cutting sharply against the burnt sky. The occasional distant rumble from the ground hinted at a restless geology beneath the planet's crust. His instruments picked up minimal life signs, nothing more than faint traces, mere echoes of a once thriving ecosystem. Then he saw it. A dark, hulking form stood near the base of the cliffs. At first, he thought it was a strange rock formation, an outcropping carved by time and erosion, but something about it seemed off, too deliberate, too alive. He moved closer, instinctively slowing his pace as the shape became clearer. It was a creature, a massive one. The giant bird stood taller than any life form he had ever encountered, its feathers dark and shimmering in the dim light, like metal fragments catching the sun. It was unlike any bird he had seen on earth with a wingspan that looked as though it could block out the sky. Its beak was sharp and curved, hinting at a predator's nature. But it wasn't the size or appearance that unsettled him. It was the bird's posture. The creature stood motionless, head low, wings folded tight against its sides. And then he noticed. The bird was crying. Large, clear droplets of liquid fell from its deep-set eyes, hitting the dust-covered ground beneath it. The sound was soft but persistent, a quiet sorrow echoing through the stillness of the planet. The explorer's heart raced, his breath shallow within the confines of his helmet. He hadn't been trained for this. Communication with alien species was part of the job, but this was something different. This was raw emotion. He couldn't look away from the bird's tears, their inexplicable presence in this strange, desolate world. Why was it crying? Was it hurt? Was it mourning something lost? He had no way of knowing. His hand hovered over the communicator strapped to his chest. But what would he even say? Base, there's a giant bird, and it's weeping. He could already imagine the response, the confusion that would greet such a message. He decided to move closer carefully, step by step, not wanting to startle the creature. It didn't react to his approach, its head remaining low, as if consumed by its sorrow. He stopped a few feet away, his eyes scanning for any sign of injury or distress. The bird's feathers were pristine, its body unmarked. Yet it continued to weep. He knelt down, reaching into his pack for one of the sample containers he always carried. He held it out, unsure what to expect, but hoping it might offer some kind of response. Slowly, the bird's massive head turned, its eyes, wide, black, and impossibly deep, focusing on him. For a moment, there was silence, broken only by the sound of the planet's distant tremors. Then, in a slow, deliberate motion, the bird lowered itself further, its beak gently touching the container in his hands. A single tear fell into the container, followed by another. The explorer's hands shook slightly, overwhelmed by the odd intimacy of the moment. What was this creature trying to tell him? Was it communicating through its tears— or was it simply resigned to its fate, whatever that might be? The bird let out a low, mournful sound, a deep hum that vibrated through the ground beneath him. The noise wasn't threatening, but it carried an undeniable weight, like a song of loss, or a cry for help. The explorer's heart clenched. He had no idea how to respond. Suddenly, a faint signal flashed on his suit's display. A low frequency, weak but present, seemed to be coming from the bird. He checked his instruments again to confirm. The signal wasn't natural. It was being emitted by something. Could the bird be carrying technology, or was it somehow broadcasting this signal itself? He hesitated. If this bird was more than just an animal, if it was somehow linked to an intelligent force, then this mission had just changed. Everything he had known about this world, about the universe, 
was shifting under his feet. But the weeping, those tears were real, tangible. Whatever advanced abilities this creature might possess, its emotions were undeniably raw and genuine. The explorer stood, his eyes meeting the birds once again. He didn't know what to do, but he knew he couldn't just leave. The giant alien bird had led him here for a reason, and now, it was up to him to figure out why. As the signal grew stronger, the bird's mournful cry intensified. Something was about to happen, something he couldn't yet comprehend. The bird remained still as the explorer adjusted his equipment, eyes fixed on the creature before him. The signal that had appeared was weak but consistent, pulsing in rhythm with the bird's low, mournful hum. It was clear now that this wasn't just an animal. There was something more, something deeper at play. He reached for his communication device, not to report back, but to try a different approach. Maybe, just maybe, he could use it to establish some kind of connection. His fingers moved quickly over the device, adjusting frequencies, cycling through various channels. He wasn't sure if the bird would understand, or even if it could respond, but he had to try. The alien creature didn't move, but its gaze remained locked on him, its eyes following his every movement, as if waiting for something, perhaps a signal of intent or a message. After a few minutes of trying different methods, the explorer spoke softly into the communicator, broadcasting a simple message. I don't know if you can understand me, but I'm here to help. His voice echoed in the quiet landscape, the words feeling small against the vast backdrop of the alien world. The bird didn't react at first. It continued its sorrowful hum, but there was a subtle shift in the air around them. The explorer could feel it, a tension, almost like anticipation. He took a deep breath and stepped closer, holding his communicator out toward the bird. The signal pulsed once more, and for a brief moment, he thought he saw a flicker of recognition in the creature's eyes. It was fleeting, but unmistakable. With that, the bird moved slightly, lifting its massive head and letting out a low, resonant sound that seemed to vibrate through the ground beneath his feet. The sound wasn't random. It was rhythmic, almost musical. The explorer realized that this was its response. The bird was trying to communicate, not with words, but with sounds and vibrations. He adjusted his device again, trying to mimic the rhythm of the bird's hum, sending out a similar pulse through his communicator. The bird's head tilted slightly, and for the first time, it shifted its body toward him. It wasn't aggressive or threatening. It was as though the bird had finally understood that he was trying to communicate on its terms. The bird's cry softened, and the tears that had been steadily falling seemed to slow. There was a pause, a moment of stillness as the explorer waited to see what would happen next. Then, almost imperceptibly, the bird began to move its wings. They unfolded slowly, each feather shimmering in the muted light of the planet. The movement was graceful, deliberate, but there was something else beneath the surface, an energy, a purpose that the explorer couldn't quite grasp yet. He stood there, watching as the bird's wings stretched outward, revealing something hidden beneath them. A glowing pattern, faint but distinct, appeared along the length of the wings. The pattern pulsed in time with the signal he had detected earlier. It wasn't random. The bird was showing him something, something important. For a brief moment, the explorer felt a surge of excitement. This wasn't just a creature from another world. It was intelligent, purposeful, and it was trying to communicate with him. He didn't know exactly what the patterns meant, but he knew that they held the key to understanding why the bird was weeping why it had sought him out in the first place. The bird let out another low hum, and the glowing patterns pulsed again. The explorer quickly recorded the signal, realizing that the pattern was a form of communication, perhaps a language or code, but certainly something intentional. He was beginning to understand, slowly, that this bird had a story to tell. Time passed in a blur as the explorer worked to decipher the pattern, comparing it to the signals and data he had collected earlier. The bird remained patient, watching him as he worked, as though it knew he would eventually piece together the puzzle. And then it clicked. The patterns, the signals, they weren't just random pulses. They were coordinates, specific locations marked out across the planet. The bird wasn't just weeping for itself. It was mourning something greater, 
something lost or forgotten on this world. The explorer's heart raced as the realization sank in. The bird had been trying to lead him to these locations, but why? What was it protecting? Or perhaps, what was it mourning? He couldn't be sure, but one thing was clear. The bird's sorrow was tied to these places, and it needed his help to uncover whatever had been left behind. With renewed determination, the explorer packed up his equipment, ready to follow the bird's lead. He had no idea what he would find at the coordinates, but he knew it was important, maybe even more important than his original mission. The bird, sensing his intent, lowered its head once more, as if to thank him for understanding. He nodded in response, feeling a strange connection to this creature, this being from another world that had chosen him to help. The bird's tears had revealed more than just sadness. They had revealed a purpose, a reason for its existence, and now, it was up to the explorer to follow the trail it had laid out. As the bird stood tall once again, its wings slowly folding back against its body, the explorer prepared to set off. He couldn't shake the feeling that this was only the beginning of something much larger, something that would change everything he thought he knew about this planet and its inhabitants. The bird's weeping had stopped, but the mystery remained. And now, it was his to solve. The coordinates the bird had communicated were clear now. The explorer set off across the rocky landscape, moving with purpose, the gravity of the situation weighing on him. The further he traveled, the more he noticed subtle changes in the environment, cracks in the earth that seemed too precise, patches of ground that were smoother than the surrounding area as if something had once been built here and then erased by time. The path was long, but the destination wasn't far. His suit's navigational system confirmed that he was approaching the exact coordinates the bird had indicated. As he crested a low hill, he saw it, an enormous structure, partially buried beneath the planet's surface. It was unlike anything he had ever seen, a monolithic ruin made from some kind of dark, metallic material that seemed to pulse faintly with energy, even after who knew how many years of neglect. He descended toward the structure, feeling a strange pull, like he was being drawn in by something far greater than himself. The bird's tears, the strange signals, the glowing patterns on its wings, all of it had been leading to this place. Whatever he was about to uncover, it was something important, something that had been hidden for a reason. As he neared the entrance, his helmet's display flickered with a surge of energy coming from within the ruin. There was power here, still active despite the passage of time. He hesitated for a moment, then pushed forward, stepping into the dark opening that yawned before him. Inside, the temperature dropped noticeably, and the air felt thick with ancient dust. His suit's lights cut through the darkness, revealing a massive, empty chamber. At the far end, he could make out a series of intricate carvings etched into the walls, symbols similar to the patterns the bird had shown him. These weren't random designs, they told a story, a history that had been buried along with this place. He moved closer, examining the carvings in detail. They depicted a civilization that once thrived on this planet, an advanced species that had built incredible cities and technology far beyond anything humanity had achieved. But then, something changed. The next series of carvings showed destruction, war, or perhaps a natural disaster, wiping out nearly everything in its path. The bird, or at least its species, had been a part of this civilization. The weeping wasn't just for personal loss. It was for the entire world that had been lost. The realization hit him hard. The bird wasn't simply an intelligent creature. It was one of the last remnants of this fallen civilization. Its tears weren't just a display of emotion. They were a testament to the pain and sorrow of a species on the brink of extinction. The weight of that knowledge settled over him like a lead blanket. As he moved further into the chamber, his eyes were drawn to a large pedestal in the center of the room. On it sat a small, glowing object, faint but unmistakable. He approached it cautiously, unsure of what it was or what it might do. The object pulsed gently with the same energy he had sensed when the bird revealed the coordinates. It was connected to everything that had happened. His suit scanner couldn't identify the object, but there was something inherently powerful about it, something that suggested it held the key to understanding not only the bird's sorrow but the fate of the entire planet. He reached out, 
fingers brushing the surface of the object. It was warm to the touch, vibrating slightly with a strange energy. As soon as he made contact, the room around him seemed to shift. The walls flickered, and suddenly, he was no longer standing in an empty ruin. Instead, the chamber was alive with movement, filled with members of the bird species, once proud, now ghosts of a time long gone. They moved through the space, busy with tasks, their voices echoing in a language he couldn't understand but felt in his bones. It wasn't a recording. It was more than that. This was a memory, somehow embedded into the structure itself, replaying the final days of this lost civilization. He watched as they worked frantically, building, creating, trying to save themselves from whatever had been coming. But it was too late. He could see the desperation in their movements, feel the tension in the air. They knew the end was near. And then, as quickly as it had started, the vision was gone. The room was once again silent, dark, and empty. The explorer stood there, hands still on the glowing object, his mind racing. The bird hadn't just been mourning its world. It had been trying to preserve it, to keep its memory alive for anyone who might come after. He stepped back from the pedestal, his mind spinning with the enormity of what he had just witnessed. The bird's tears, the signals, the patterns, it was all connected to this ancient attempt at survival. They had tried to hold on to their world, to keep their civilization from disappearing entirely, but they had failed. And now, the bird was all that was left. But why had the bird chosen him? Why had it led him here, shown him all of this? He couldn't shake the feeling that there was something more, something he was missing. The bird wasn't just mourning its past, it wanted something from him. It needed him to do something. As he turned to leave the chamber, his helmet's display lit up again, another surge of energy emanating from deep within the structure. He followed the signal, his footsteps echoing through the empty halls, until he reached another room, smaller, more intimate. In the center of this room stood another pedestal, but this one was different. It wasn't just a relic of the past. It was active. He approached cautiously, scanning the device. It was ancient yet somehow still functional, its purpose unclear but undeniably important. His scanner beeped, picking up a transmission, a low-frequency signal that seemed to pulse in sync with the object he had touched earlier. And then, he understood. The bird had brought him here not just to witness the past but to ensure the future. This device, it was a failsafe, a final attempt by the bird's species to protect their legacy, to pass on their knowledge, their history, their very existence to anyone who could understand it. The bird couldn't do it alone. It needed help, someone who could activate the device, who could ensure that their story wasn't lost forever. The explorer's hands shook slightly as he reached for the control panel, his fingers hovering over the buttons. This was it. This was the reason the bird had wept, the reason it had sought him out. It wasn't just crying for what had been lost. It was crying for what still needed to be saved. With a deep breath, he pressed the button. The device whirred to life, and the room around him began to glow. This was the start of something new. As the device whirred to life, the air in the room seemed to hum with energy, a low vibration that pulsed in rhythm with the ancient technology. The explorer stepped back, watching as the walls around him began to shift, glowing faintly as lines of light spread outward from the pedestal. The patterns that had been etched into the walls now glowed brighter, as if they were part of a larger system, something that had been dormant for untold years but was now awakening. His suit's reading spiked, picking up a surge in power, though nothing indicated it was dangerous. The energy levels, while high, were contained, purposeful. Whatever he had activated was working as it was intended, but he still had no idea what the end result would be. He kept his distance, observing as the light spread throughout the room, linking the ancient carvings together in a web of interconnected lines. It was mesmerizing, but also unnerving. He felt as though he were standing on the edge of something monumental, something far beyond his understanding. Then, without warning, the energy surged outward, shooting up through the ceiling of the structure. The pulse was so strong that it sent a ripple through the atmosphere, and for a brief moment, the planet itself seemed to react. The ground trembled beneath his feet, and the sky outside flickered, as though responding to the pulse. 
He checked his instruments, but they couldn't make sense of what was happening. And then it stopped. The tremors ceased, the lights in the room dimmed, and the hum of energy settled into a steady, quiet rhythm. It wasn't gone, just controlled, stable. Whatever had just been triggered, it had now entered a new phase. The explorer turned, half expecting the bird to appear beside him, but he was alone in the chamber. He stepped back toward the pedestal, cautiously approaching the now quiet device. As he neared, his suit picked up a faint signal, different from the ones before. It was weaker, more like a transmission waiting to be decoded. He activated his communicator and tuned it to match the frequency, listening as the signal slowly transformed into something intelligible. It was a voice. Not human, but clear and articulate, speaking in a language that, moments ago, would have been indecipherable. Now, thanks to the patterns he had seen, the explorer could understand the message. Thank you for waking us, the voice said. We feared we had been forgotten. The words hit him with a force he hadn't anticipated. This was it, the final transmission from a civilization long gone, a message left behind for whoever might come after. It was an acknowledgement, not just of their existence, but of their hope that someone, someday, would find them. The voice continued, calm and measured. We are the last of our kind, preserved in this place, waiting for the day we might be found. Our world is gone, our people lost, but we have left behind what we could. Our history, our knowledge, our stories, they are here, within these walls, for you to take. The explorer's breath caught in his throat. The full weight of what he had uncovered settled over him. This wasn't just a ruin, it was a vault a repository of everything this species had been. Their entire legacy was now in his hands. We leave it to you, the voice said, to carry our story forward, to ensure that we are not lost to time. You are our final hope. There was a pause, and for a moment, the room was silent again. The explorer stood frozen, his mind racing as he processed what he had just heard. This species, this civilization— they had placed their faith in whoever would find them, trusting that their legacy would not be forgotten. And now, that responsibility rested on his shoulders. The voice returned, softer now, as if speaking directly to him. You have the power to ensure that our story does not end here. Our world is gone, but you can carry us with you. In your actions, in your decisions, we will live on. The weight of the message was immense. He had come here as an explorer a lone human on a distant planet, but now he was something more. He was a link in a chain that spanned across time and space, a bridge between two species, one living, one extinct. The bird, the last of its kind, had led him here not just to witness this history, but to take it with him, to carry it forward into the universe. As the transmission faded, the explorer stood in the quiet chamber, his mind racing. What was he supposed to do now? He couldn't take the knowledge with him in a physical sense. There was too much, too vast a history to download or store. But the message, the story, it was something he could share, something he could preserve in his own way. And then it hit him. The bird. The creature that had led him here was not just a remnant of this civilization, but a living embodiment of their will to survive. It had carried their story through time, weeping not just for what had been lost, but for what still remained waiting to be found. He had to find the bird. It was the key, the living memory of this world. If he could find it again, maybe there was a way to preserve more than just the story. Maybe there was a way to keep their legacy alive, to give the bird a future beyond this planet. With renewed purpose, the explorer turned and left the chamber, his thoughts racing. The bird had entrusted him with something precious, something that went beyond just the history of a lost world. It had given him a chance to ensure that its species, its culture, wouldn't fade into obscurity. As he emerged from the ruins, the sky above was different. The pulse of energy that had surged from the structure seemed to have changed the atmosphere, making it brighter, more vibrant. It was as if the planet itself had been waiting for this moment, for the chance to breathe again after centuries of silence. The explorer scanned the horizon, searching for any sign of the bird. It didn't take long. In the distance, he saw its massive form, perched atop a high ridge, its wings spread wide as if it were waiting for him. 
He started toward it, his steps quickening with a sense of urgency. This was the moment he had been waiting for, the moment when everything would come together. As he approached, the bird turned to face him, its eyes glowing faintly in the light of the planet's now clear sky. There was no need for words. The connection between them was stronger than any language, built on the shared experience of what they had uncovered. The bird's head dipped slightly, acknowledging his presence, and for the first time, the explorer saw something different in its eyes. The sorrow was still there, but it was no longer overwhelming. There was something else, something that felt like hope. He reached out, his hand brushing against the bird's feathers, and in that moment, he understood. This wasn't just about preserving a story. It was about ensuring that the legacy of this civilization, of this species, would live on, not just in memory, but in the living, breathing creature before him. Together, they would carry the story forward. And in doing so, they would ensure that the past was never truly lost.